Well, it depends on the size, but you know, somewhere between 800 and 1,000 separate bits if it's a fully battened mainsail, That's possibly. Mental. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to get you started? Yeah, go on, I'm going to, yeah, you get me started. We've been in Millbrook these past few days, sailing some pretty speedy boats. Oh, my God. I felt the bow go on then. But now we've moved on to Dorset, where the guys and girls at Kemp Sails are based. Grab a brew and watch as our new radial cut genoa is created from some pretty revolutionary material. It's their new fabric, which is made of, uh, partly made of recycled plastics. We try our hand at the sewing machines and watch the magic that is creating a brand new sail. <gasps> Look how pretty it is. Looks so nice, eh? Yeah. Oh, and hit subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers. We're at Kemp Sales today, down in Dorset, and this is Rob. What's your job here, Rob? <laughs> oh, everything. Uh, everything, <laughs> yeah. Primary, I own the company, but I do sale designs and make the tea, fix the plumbing when the plumbing breaks. <laughs> we're a small family business, relatively small. But it's really nice to be back. We were here about a year ago, wasn't it? I um, it off. Yeah, it has. It feels like ages ago now, doesn't it? But this is following on from our um, rigging project that we were doing in Grenada. If you need a little recap on that one, when we were in Grenada a few months ago, we added another forestay, furler, deck and mast mounting points to give us more redundancy and greater sail area downwind also making us a solent rigged boat. Then in Curaçao, the island we were on last, we took the measurements and sent them Kemp's way. One of those measurements was from the top of the mast to the waterline, and Becca wanted to know why. Why is the waterline kind of that relevant within the sail? It's a, it's a good question. We get asked that a lot. I was out measuring this morning and a customer asked me the same thing and I'm measuring for his Genoa tracks in the water. Basically, we need a datum point. Mm -hmm. Now, the datum point could be the top of the mast or it could be the water or if the boat's on the hard, it, it could be the ground. It, it, it kind of doesn't matter. Um, using the waterline or the ground is easier than using the top of the mast because the mast isn't in the boat over the winter. You, you can't measure it. So what, what we're trying to effectively do is to create that, that drawing we were looking at earlier. So we'll start off with the, the datum point of the waterline and then swinging circles from the bow of the boat at the base of the mast, front of the Genoa track, back of the Genoa track. And then we'll take a dimension up to the bow of the boat to the forestay pin up to the base of the mast and then we do that little cheeky measurement check where we also get yep. the um, base of the mast to the deck so we yep, can cross check stuff yep. front of the genoa track back of the genoa track so now we know where your genoa tracks are yeah we know where the bow of the boat is so we can try to join those up to get a deck level yeah we then know to use the rough drawing mm -hmm. what the superstructure roughly of the boat's like Oh, that's so cool. You can piece together the boat. So now you've got yeah. uh, the, the, the critical part is, is that we is mm -hmm. Genoa track, the base of the mast point and the bow. They're the, the, the things that are relevant. The rest of it's just to make it look vaguely pretty. Yeah. And then we do the same thing with the height measurements. So we swing on a circle. So you've got the, the, the top of the mast and then the four stay point. Mm -hmm. So then we join the dots up. Oh, yeah. And then you've got your furling drum height. Yeah. So now we know the maximum hoist where the tack of the sail is going to be. Mm -hmm. And we can look at that and think, actually, that mast is, is about what we would expect in yep. terms of rake. We then join the dots up. Oh, cool. And now we've got a very basic two-dimensional view of the sail. Yeah. So we've checked your measurements. So we're confident the way you've measured the boat actually looks right. Well, it's pretty nice to know that despite our tape measure being a bit wobbly at points and us not quite understanding some of the measurements, that these folks can look at our squiggles and figure out if all the measurements add up correctly. So now it's time to cut. Yeah, the table's got lots of little holes in it. So when we turn the fans on, the fabric will get sucked down to the table. It's really important to hold the fabric accurately. So when the cutting head moves up and down, it doesn't move. The numbers on there, 3-1 at the moment, is this panel here. That's so interesting. So it's just doing this section at the moment. Uh, it's, they're all random because if you get the best use of the material, we might have 3-1 nested oh, against the 2-5. Okay. Or... So that program automatically works out what's the best? Uh, that's what I tend to do. Once okay. I've designed it, I'll select how they, they best sit together. Yeah, yeah. massive game of Tetris. We knew we wanted to go for a slightly smaller sail than our pre-existing Genoa. With a lower cut clue, but I had no idea what fabric to go for until Rob suggested using this. The fabric is made by a company called Dimension Polyant, it's a German sailcloth manufacturer, and it's their DCXCT. It's their new fabric, which is made of, uh, partly made of recycled plastics. 
it's it's pretty much the first one in the in the marketplace to do that and it's depending on the weight of fabric it's between 35 and 39 percent of the of the material is made of recycled polyester which is crazy yeah really really crazy it's very different to our current one isn't it yeah your current sails are, are all woven polyester this fabric is a is a laminate so the kind of stuff you see on race boats but it's a cruising version so if you think of it like a, a sandwich you've got a, a, a middle bit cheese and onion whatever you want in your sandwich and then the outside of it you, you've got another layer on the outside of that is another layer so you've got the the fibrous stuff in the middle then you've got two layers of plastic film and then the outside of that like a it's called a taffeta it's a lightweight polyester cover on the outside yeah which makes it more more durable all of these have the little initials on them like this this one says 1b slash 4 so 1b slash 4 is there we're just going to unroll all these and match them up before sealing Sticking, seaming. St sticking first, we bond them then first, seaming. then seam it. Got it. We always knew it was a huge feat to even make just one sail, but seeing just how many steps, oh, and parts. How many parts does a made sail have? Well, it depends on the size, but you know, somewhere between 800 and 1,000 separate bits if it's a fully battened mainsail, That's possibly. mental. Gives us a whole new appreciation for what goes into the cloth that takes our boat around the world. These are the like tiny little bits, glue, tack. Ed. When you're sticking, you're not looking at that bit, you're looking here, even though it's sticking wow. there. If you feel it, it's really super tacky. Yeah. So that, that wheel on the back of the machine is pushing down at about five bar. So it will push it down, so you stitch it, it helps the consistency of the stitch, but it yeah. also squishes the glue into all the seam which helps the seam bond. Basically what you're doing there locks in what the shape of the sail is going to be. Oh no. <laughs> Once we had stuck all these sections of fabric together, it was time to start sewing. And apparently I was up first. Compared to a normal sewing machine that has like a clutch, they don't have a clutch. So they have a, it's called a variable stop motor. So it does two things. One, you can control the, the, the foot, that's the puller lift, or you can lift both by heeling down on the pedal. So whenever you're touching that bit, keep your fingers away from that bit. You see the little red dot on the on the foot there? Yeah. You're trying to line that red dot up with the edge of that fabric. Ah, uh, okay. So you, you don't want to have a red dot over here somewhere because you're then stitching through fresh air. And if it's all over here, you're stitching through fresh air. So the other th side. this is the bit obviously you want to stitch. Yeah, and that there, seam's so. not that wide. If you feel it, it's kind yeah. of to about where my thumbnail so is. So that lined up with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to get you started? Yeah, go on, I'm going, yeah, you get me started. <laughs> Get it lined up so everything lines up first because yeah. if you rush at it you'll end up screwing it up. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah? I'm, yeah, I'm just helping. So yeah, yeah go for it. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm really nervous. Okay, gotta just go for it. I've drifted that way, so, so I need to bring left, it this yeah, back. So yeah. your left hand towards you. We had a little go, but you know, Rob was a tad better than us. Is the zigzag stitch just a stronger stitch? It's, a, it... it's a three step, so it does three stitches left and three stitches right. So it looks like a zigzag, but yeah. it's what we call triple stitch. Oh. So if the, the stitch gets broken, it doesn't unravel like a normal oh, zigzag. Sense. So we left him to continue sewing it before we headed out into Pool Harbour for their weekly fireworks night. They get the ship there. Banging. Oh my gosh. Over the next few days, the head, clue, and tack patches were stacked and sewn. For those unfamiliar with sailing, these are the corners of the sail triangle. And they need to be extra tough because that's where the attachment points for the lines, which hoist, furl, and trim the sails go. Different kinds of fabric are being used because they've got better strength at all angles. Yeah, it's a bit more different, better balanced on the, these underlayers. Yeah. So those kind of 15, 20, 25 degrees, you still get acceptable amounts of strength.
How many layers are in that? Seven? Seven? Yeah, seven. And eventually it was time to add the finishing touches. So that's got his Kemp Sales shirt on. Yeah, representing. You ready for your day of work? Yeah, let's go, we're a bit late, Becca. <laughs> Look how pretty it is. It looks so nice, eh? Well, if you can see your stitches on it or not. Maybe. Where are all the crooked stitches, Becca? <laughs> wow. It looks amazing. Look at this. Yes, ma'am. That's so cool. That's really nice, that colour as well, eh? That's the, that's the sea mist. Yeah, that's, that's so nice. So nice. Oh my gosh. It's pretty, eh? Really pretty. Happy? Yeah, really happy. That's so nice. Oh, it's stunning. Look at that. Wow. You guys have done such a good job. This looks so nice. Wow. -y. Our boat is pushed hard and often. And no, we aren't talking about speed. But naturally, whilst cruising, sails have a pretty tough life. There's the constant UV of the strong tropical sun, or the sole acting as the quickest corrosion method possible, or the unexpected schools in the night, and the furling, unfurling almost every day. The sails have to withstand a lot, but to see the intense attention to detail and high regard for the quality of their cloth makes us pretty confident in our choice of sailmaker. Sail furled up, that bit sits in the sunlight all the time with yeah. the webbing, so to stop the head rotting, we've actually skimmed it with UV both sides so the yeah. head webbing to underneath. So yeah. It, you can't get UV damage on it. That's good. Yeah, the sun out there at the moment is savage. got three parts to it. It locks in. Then there's a, we press it in the hydraulic press. Oh. So who wants the honour of putting the corner in? Go on, Zach. You, you sure? Yeah, I know you'll get a kick out of that. Go on. What's it getting up to? 25, 25 tons. Yeah. Just double the boat's weight. Two of our boats on top of that. Look at that. That's going nowhere. So usually we have a long one and a slightly short one. Up and down. Okay. There, so all the load is coming through the long part. And then this one just splits the load by coming yeah. up into the middle slightly. And you can either have it back to back here or we can split it. So you have it a bit more like this. Yeah. And we can also then want to run some webbing around the front. So when you start to burn it, yeah. the load is then split so it pulls straight down. You do a little notch just to allow the webbings to sit in slightly. And then that folds over. Folds over on this part. Yeah. And I need to do that at that end too. Yes. Yeah, cool. So I have the, the fold on the inside. Over first and then. Over and over, yeah. Yeah. So they leave this end out. Yeah. Like that. See ya. Yeah. Lovely, look at that. Sure. And underneath. Yeah, you can do That's clever. Down. And then what we do here is hand stitch around here to lock these two in place. So this has got a wax cover on it. So it sticks itself, which helps us when we're stitching mainly. Yeah. And also it's much, much stronger. Yeah. Once that was done, it was time to move on to the leech line. For people who have no idea what a leech line does. So if you imagine when you're sailing along the back of the sails is vibrating slightly, yeah. which is quite common on a furling, you know, because you've got UV strip one side and not the other, so it's slightly different weight one side of the sail to the other. Yeah. Uh, you just, just pull the leech line on a little bit and it, it's attached at the head of the sail and it effectively shortens the leech with the string. And this has got a little bit of elasticity in it as well. So it just holds the, stops the back edge flapping around. Yeah. And we do the same on the foot. 
Um, the foot one's a little bit of a coarser adjustment because once you set it, you probably never need to adjust it again, yeah. um, just to stop the back edge flapping. Anyway, let's fold her up and see if she fits in our 23 kilo weight of hammer suitcase. The tack's ready to go on that. Look at that, that can be hand luggage. <laughs> That's awesome. It's always worth folding a Genoa from clue to tack and a mainsail from tack to clue. Oh, okay. Why is that? Because when you get it on the deck, oh, yeah. it's ready to clip the yeah. tack straight on on a mainsail. If you do from tack to clue, it's ready to put the clue onto the end of the boot. Good tip. Oh, yeah, there you go. Perfect. Look at that. Beautiful. One sail. Good fucking day. Thank you so much, you guys. You've done like an outstanding job. <laughs> Even less. No way! 18. Oh, that's awesome, we can even put more stuff yeah. with it in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, it's been a while. Hey. Just See you in a year and a half, eh? Do you remember us? Probably not. Bye, darling. So proud of you guys. Bye! Bye, Bye Spin! And just like that, our time in the UK has come to an end. <laughs> It's really early in the morning right now. We've got a bit of an earlier flight. <laughs> Just gonna have a coffee and then pop to the airport. Get back to Taylor. We'll be back to Taylor by the end of today. Seven tonight, probably. Yeah, our flight lands at five Aruba time. So, yeah. It's gonna be a busy day ahead of us, but looking forward to getting back and hopefully we get back with all our cases. We've got not one, not two, not three, but four. <laughs> Four cases, apparently you can't be a minimalist while holding a boat. Have you got enough stuff there, Zach? Well, apparently not. But <laughs> this is going to be a fun bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I might think... not have thought about this that well. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not Very clever. Hi, Dad. Taylor, here we come. Thanks so much, Kemp Sales, for showing us the ropes this week and creating, in our eyes, the most beautiful sail yet. We can't wait to hoist it. Next Monday, we are back in Aruba. Our boat seems so different than normal. I can't even explain. Feels like when we actually bought the boat and we moved onto it for the first time. It smells different. It looks different. It seems like other people have. Is this an Airbnb? We're joined by some bees. What do we even do? Oh no! Ah, there's so many out here. And it's no rest for the wicked as boat work starts. It's just some proper backyard <laughs> epoxying. Don't, don't look. <laughs>